so this is the Catalyze Tech Awards, uh, where we're trying to showcase innovative um, and uh, interesting medtech technologies uh, that are looking at serving last mile communities. So the Catalyze Tech Awards are a culmination of a Catalyze Tech Challenge that Selco Foundation and partners launched to identify energy efficient medtech innovations. Uh, the challenge was launched in December of 2023 and the goal was really to try and identify enterprises that were keen to innovate, supply and integrate efficient medtech um, and combine that with decentralized energy solutions for last mile communities. Uh, so a lot of the innovators were applying for a range of support from capacity building to deploying hardware and uh, developing evidence base for uh, innovations itself. Um, I think one of the reasons that we've been uh, we've been trying to kind of foster these uh, tech challenges is really to try and identify these innovators who, whose solutions can then be integrated into the work that's already happening with the energy for health space. Also to support innovators that are looking to understand a little bit more either about the end user base itself or to um, hone their product a bit more and connect to other networks within the space. Um, to, to give out these awards, uh, we have here with us uh, Mr. Sanjay Hazarika ji. He's the managing trustee and the founder of the Center for Northeast Studies and Policy Research. Uh, CNES is a very well-known organization in this space, so uh, it doesn't need much introduction. Uh, Sir himself is a renowned author, a columnist, and a filmmaker from the region. Um, he used to be a former correspondent with the New York Times and has held various positions, uh, um, including being the former director of the Commonwealth Human Rights Initiative and the former director of the Center for Northeast Studies at Jamia Media Islamia in New Delhi. Uh, his books include Strangers No More, New Narratives from the Northeast, uh, and a successor, which, is, which was a successor to his acclaimed Strangers of the Mist. Um, We've actually been working with CNES in the past, our understanding of kind of the healthcare systems within the Riverine Islands uh, of Assam and an understanding of what it takes to really provide healthcare to last mile communities and island uh, populations in this region has come through a lot of the work with partners like CNES. And they were really critical in helping us understand the uh, energy, the energy requirements to provide these health services in these areas and what it takes when you start to look at mobility and inclusion of healthcare uh, within these boat clinics. So I think that partnership has really again, much like a lot of the other work that we spoke about yesterday, has really helped us look at different kinds of delivery models within healthcare when we think about solar powering and e efficient equipment to improve uh, health outcomes. With this, I'd like to welcome Sanjay ji to the stage. Um, we'll have a round of applause while we bring Sanjay ji. We'd like to request you to uh, felicitate a lot of the winners uh, of this uh, Catalyze Tech Challenge. So the first winner is Care Mother uh, for their comprehensive plan in rolling out solar-powered mother and child healthcare kits in the last mile. Uh, I would request Sanjay ji to please present a token of recognition to Ms. Tarana Mehdiratta, who's the Head of Business Development and Partnerships from Care Mother, as well as to Mr. Nikesh Ingle, who's the Director from Care Mother, uh, requesting you to please come on stage.
Uh, I'd request Tarana to please share a bit more about Care Mother and the innovation that we are talking about. What does I do? Uh, first of all, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Hazarika, and also to Selco Foundation for recognizing our work in this space. Uh, by way of introduction, Care Mother um, is an IIT Bombay based healthcare startup. We are uh, working in the space of pregnancy health, making it available, affordable to women no matter where they are. Uh, the solutions that have been facilitated here, I'd like to just talk about them a little bit more. So, uh, the first one is actually a point of care, uh, high risk pregnancy identification and management solution. This consists of point of care devices, which are uh, put together in a compact kit, given in the hands of the health worker, who is trained by us to actually perform these diagnostics uh, to women at doorstep. Uh, why is high risk pregnancy so important in the Northeast? Recent uh, data shows that uh, compared to the rest of the country, almost 66% is the highest prevalence in the northeastern states of Manipur, Meghalaya, and Mizoram. Now that's an alarming number. And what makes it makes these women even more vulnerable is the fact that they are so far away, cut off many times due to climate incidents from the mainland, which makes it very necessary for doorstep care to be made available to them so that pregnancies are managed through the nine months with early registration and avoiding emergency obstetric care, making sure that women, if they need it, are referred right on time. Um, how does this solution become more effective is with the software that we offer. So not only is there a you know, portable kit, but it comes with a software solution uh, with, which is carried by the health worker on her mobile phone. She registers the pregnancy, it gives her the risk profile, it gives her a good understanding of what needs to be done with the pregnancy and also connects her with the doctor uh, and a web portal which allows for program tracking and data analytics. Um, what we've seen is that with early registration and with even just two quality antenatal care checks which are possible because of anandima, we have seen a dip in low birth weight and in prematurity. This makes it very significant for the northeastern states of India and we are working with our partners to make this uh, you know, more widespread as we go along. I'd like to take this opportunity to also launch uh, and introduce one of our new products that we have now. New in the sense that it's been made solar powered. So not just Anandima, which is also made solar powered with Selco Foundation's help, but even our Fetomax device is now a solar powered device. So this is probably the world's first fetal monitor, which is a solar powered device offering uh, you know, NST, CTG, which is basically non-stress test and uh, labor monitoring for pregnancies uh, in the last uh, trimester of, uh, of their gestation. Um, currently, there is no fetal monitoring happening at the VLCs. And how does that impact women? So, if there is any kind of fetal distress, women have to, you know, it's only diagnosed when they go to like a district hospital or to a CHC or to a medical college by which it's quite late and, uh, you know, results in sometimes in fetal death and maternal death. By, uh, you know, ensuring that at the primary center, the primary health center, you have fetal monitoring available uh, can solve this problem. So, Fetomax is a portable, wireless, AI-powered uh, fetal monitoring device which allows health workers of basic education to perform NST on the pregnancy or the, on the pregnant mothers and refer them. AI-powered uh, auto-interpretation of the results allows for the pregnancy of, uh, to be monitored very closely and for the doctors to take quick decisions. Uh, so this we've launched uh, very recently and uh, we are very happy that Self Foundation has given us this platform to talk about it. I'd also like to thank our partners, um, Clinic, who's already using our solutions, uh, Pyramid Swas, um, uh, of course Selco Foundation, we are also now working with Negrims in Shillong and we are you know, work, looking forward to more and more such partnerships because our aim as a healthcare startup is to make sure that women receive quality care no matter where they are. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, another round of applause for colleagues from Care Mother. 
Uh, our next winner is Roundworks Technologies Private Limited uh, for their sustainable intervention model using AlveoFit, which is a digital spirometer device. Uh, I'd like to request uh, Mr. Vaibhav Bhavsar, uh, who's the Vice President of Roundworks Technologies, to please join us on stage. Uh, the stage is yours, Mr. Weber, for the next five minutes. We'll hear a little bit more about the intervention. Hi. Uh, thank you, Sadhguru, to recognize us. Uh, okay. Uh, we have the portable spirometer. You guys must be know what is a spirometer. Okay. Uh, first, tell you what spirometer do. To recognize and uh, find out the condition of our lungs, we have to do a spirometry test. Okay, but why? Uh, right now, we are dealing with the air pollution, okay, as well as people are doing the smoke. Then their lungs are getting infected. But are we uh, checking the condition of the lungs right now? No. But as we all, uh, we all know already about the ECG, that ECG helps us to uh, get to the condition of our heart. The same way, if you want to check the condition of your lungs, you have to go with the PFT test. That is a spirometric test, called pulmonary uh, function test. Okay, but the availability of the spirometer are not that much. Only the high, higher metro cities, there are the availability of that. But why is it not possible? First of all, the infrastructure for PFT test is that is that is a uh, big machine. And then uh, with that big machine, we have to connect our laptop, okay? Then we have to uh, set up one room there, then the trainers, technicians, these all things we have to uh, invest. Then this investment is somewhere around 5 to 10 like this. But what do we do? We just cut down everything. Everything we cut down and created the one small spiral, okay? Then I can show you, uh, this is so much portable, I can take it into my pocket. Okay, I can do uh, my spirometry test anytime, anywhere. Okay, uh, then in the last mile villages, like here we have the tribal places, uh, uh, clinics and the uh, clinic workers are not able to reach there. Okay, then what we can do, we can supply this product to directly uh, those clinic uh, workers over there, they just took a test and we can get a report within a minute. As when they completed the test, and after that second, they will get a report. Then what happened whenever uh, any of the person, they found any illness about the lungs, or they can reach out to their uh, PSC centers, they can uh, do a test. If they found the illness, they can do a test. If they found they are having some lungs condition like obstruction, restriction. They can refer that person to district level or any of the respective level. Okay. But if this condition is not If this condition is not found, then they will be able to get the risk of 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 अगर हमें दर्द भी नहीं हो रहा है और खून भी नहीं दिखेगा बस हमें सांस सांस की तकलीफ हो रही है फिर नो तो हम बोलेंगे अरे नहीं ये तो होते ही रहता है उम्र है बट इफ अगर वो फिजिबिलिटी वहां पे है द डॉक्टर कैन सजेस्ट देन आप एक बार पीपी टेस्ट करके देखो और मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम यही होता है कि जो पेशेंट है पेशेंट फाइंड आउट कि उनको थोड़ा सांस लेने में तकलीफ हो रही है बट डॉक्टर्स क्या बोलते यू गो विद द ईसीजी एंड दे डिडंट फाउंड एनीथिंग बिकॉज़ उनका जो तकलीफ था दैट इज नॉट रिलेटेड टू द हार्ट 
दैट विल बी रिलेटेड टू दर लंग्स ओके अगर यही अगर हमने अर्ली स्टेज में इन द पी एफ सी लेवल एनी ग्राउंड लेवल अगर हमने उसको फाइंड आउट कर लिया वी कैन ट्रैक इट वी कैन रिवर्सिबल इट विद मेडिकेशन एंड एक्सरसाइज थैंक यू Thank you so much, Mr. Verma. Um, our next winner is Telehealth Innovations Foundation for developing the Intel Health app, which is an aid for frontline workers in low network connectivity zones. Uh, we have a brief video of theirs that will play uh, before we request Mr. Shaker and his colleague to come on stage.
hand over the mic to you, Dr. Shekhar. I'll just take uh, two minutes uh, to sort of add some of the points that uh, you saw in the video. Uh, so as you've seen, uh, one of the use cases of the telehealth platform that we have developed for providing the comprehensive primary health care. And this is a open source digital public good that we have developed and we work for the uh, sort of mission of uh, solving this uh, problem of access to health care which is relevant in uh, the uh, uh, hilly terrains of northeastern states and across like uh, uh, sort of India and in many other countries through the de uh, development of the digital public good uh, platforms and the digital public good solutions like the telemedicine platform. Second is on the clinical decision support system which, you see, which we are now powering with artificial intelligence engines and also uh, using this into different use cases. You saw one of the use cases for providing comprehensive primary health care uh, in, in uh, rural, remote and tribal uh, areas. Uh, and similarly, we are working in other use cases like uh, for the maternal child health care, uh, labor care guide to provide uh, uh, sort of care during the labor, uh, also like for, for NCD care, uh, uh, follow-up care for, for the cancer patients, etc. We work with uh, governments, uh, partner organizations and hospitals to uh, deploy this uh, digital public good platforms and providing uh, the implementation know-how for last mile delivery. Uh, so uh, we're working currently in India across 15 states to our various partners. We also work in Kyrgyzstan uh, and as you saw in uh, the video, uh, we worked in Philippines and Syria. Uh, our our uh, sort of uh, uh, overall uh, so till date, uh, we reached out to around 4 million uh, uh, teleconsultations and uh, uh, reaching out to supporting around 7,000 plus uh, community health workers and 2,000 plus uh, doctors. Uh, more importantly, we also uh, looked at in terms of what is the impact of the uh, using the telemedicine services. So uh, our uh, evaluations that we had done has shown that it actually saves the cost of around uh, say 580 rupees to 940 rupees per teleconsultation for the out-of-pocket expense that the uh, patient would have incurred uh, without a telemedicine project. Uh, or telemedicine solutions. Second, uh, it has also reduced in terms of uh, the 21 kilometers that has been traveled each teleconsultation by the patient. So, relating it to the reducing the carbon footprints and the clean, uh, 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 sort of healthy uh, environment, uh, and the recovery rate among the patients that have been sought for different kind of uh, sort of uh, illnesses through the our platform has been around 70 percent. So in India, we also work with Government of India for strengthening the e-Sanjini national telemedicine platform since the tech platform is already being there. Uh, what we bring in there is uh, our uh, sort of knowledge uh, in terms of the implementation know-how uh, on uh, 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 sort of rolling out and implementing uh, e-Sanjini in the last month. So we uh, work uh, with the uh, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare at the uh, central level for enhancing the features also of eSanctuary platforms. Some of the features that you saw in the uh, video about the IU platform for clinical decision supports are uh, sort of now getting incorporated in the eSanctuary. Uh, it's already in the eSanctuary 2.4. The symptom collector that is being there is we have partnered with one of our partner organizations in CDAC to develop that. And we are also working with uh, the government of Odisha, Karnataka, and Jharkhand for supporting in terms of the last mile um, uh, uh, rollout and implementation of uh, eSanjuni for improving the adoption as well as the quality of services to telemedicine platform. So our vision is uh, to uh, reach out to 100 million teleconsultations for, uh, over the next five years, partnering with the different governments and the partner organizations and hospitals uh, to improve the quality of services through the uh, digital public goods. And uh, we also, uh, in, in one of the takeaways from uh, this particular forum was uh, in terms of looking at the integration of point of care devices within the telemedicine platform so it becomes a comprehensive solution to provide community level uh, sort of uh, quality care uh, across the world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Shikhar. Uh, our final winner is uh, Perkan Technologies for rolling out 
uh, for, to roll out their plan for Abhay Parimita, which is a spot check device uh, free from the need for consumables to monitor vital signs. There's a short video that will play after which we request them to come on stage. <laughs> challenges that persist in Northern Eastern region uh, with such proximity. The innovation that you just saw, Abhay Perimiti, it's an innovation that's in the top 50 healthcare innovations of the nation listed by Niti Aayog. The innovation was showcased at the headquarters of World Health Organization as a high social impact digital innovation from India. Because what we believe is that the kind of problem we solve, it's not just um, a huge problem. We believe it's a very small problem. How about we just consolidate um, uh, <coughs> measurement of five body vitals, the five universal body vitals in one single machine. But as engineers, when we were driven to innovate something and invent something as it's internationally patented, uh, we realized that this small problem that we're solving might just have a big impact. This impact is for over 800 a million people in India, the two-thirds population that India has, where primary healthcare access is not available. We have in proximity learned yesterday that how in Northeast the major problem lies in going to the healthcare centers, PHCs, reaching the higher terrains and giving them primary healthcare access. While um, in this particular solution what we do is completely transform it. A process that in the urban developed hospitals today still take over 15 minutes per patient, five different devices and a skilled operator. We do it all with just one single machine. Uh, speaking a bit about the features, um, imagine a system requiring no operator intervention. The system itself is capable of taking clinical grade five universal body vitals. And the system is also capable of storing the EHR against the ABHA number as it's integrated with Starbox. This problem when we solve, we try to target public health centers, sub-centers, all kinds of healthcare infrastructures that can completely digitize their process and make the best use out of this device. It has a capacity of screening 1,500 patients in a day and definitely we're not just empowering communities and um, you can say health centers, healthcare infrastructures, but we're also keen on empowering the processes with which startups and other enterprises work in this particular domain. I've seen a lot of startups talk here. I'm, uh, I've met some of the enterprises out there. Um, but we're out here to collaborate and just as we've deeply spoken and learned about engagement, we are here to have this cost-effective indigenous innovation put to good use. How about when we target the community and go into the last mile? It has no network dependency. Our industry partners include Nokia and Qualcomm, with which we work day and night to ensure that how, how are we able to ensure um, digital health innovation work even out of areas where 2G network is not even present. 
We have manufacturing partners with the leading medical device banks of India, giving us a great access to producing clinical grade solutions and comply by all industry standards. Moreover, the complete innovation is targeted for the masses of India, made completely in India. We do have a demo at site. Whenever you have time, feel free to walk by and I'd be happy to walk you through. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sneha. Um, with this, we close the MedTech Award uh, showcase for the Northeast. Uh, I think just a little bit, as I mentioned, Catalyze Tech uh, is, a, is a set of innovation challenges that we launch uh, to identify innovators, to identify innovators either in specific geographies or under specific themes. In fact, the last three challenges have been focused on the Northeast. Uh, we have a Women Entrepreneurship Challenge with Niti IO, which is a broader spectrum of um, solutions that improve uh, life, livelihoods across agriculture, animal husbandry, as well as looking at health and built environment. This particular one was specifically on medical technologies for last mile communities, and we have one on animal husbandry and innovations for landless farmers. Um, there's more details on Catalyze Tech. We're happy to discuss that with you because a lot of you are working on the ground where you might know of grassroots innovators or entrepreneurs who are interested either in have a problem or are interested in looking at solutions and we'd be happy to discuss that further to see how some of these challenges can pave the way uh, to looking at innovations. Um, I'd now like to hand the floor over to Sanjay Ji. Uh, for his special address today. Over to you, sir. Good yes. uh, morning. Uh, still morning. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Wake up. I think we've had a, I'm sorry I couldn't come yesterday, I was tied up with some other things. But uh, thank you Energy for Health, IKEA Foundation, the HT Parade Foundation, CERCO for putting this remarkable event together. Uh, they say that necessity is the mother of invention, but then innovation is the mother of change. And all of you, MedTech winners, we've, we've heard from the four who won, and I'm sure there are others who participated. Um, uh, I, 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 I share with you my good wishes and, and congratulations as to all of us. I'm especially glad that one of the winners, MCH, the Care Mother uh, Initiative with Fetosense and Fetal Monitors, um, I hope uh, that we can also, because I noticed that all the uh, award winners were from outside the region. I hope that uh, next year and in the coming years we can also have winners from the, within the Northeast. Now, the other thing I wanted to say is, is the organizers also need a big round of applause. So, because they are innovators, otherwise we wouldn't be here. Uh, I think they have seen that, to paraphrase Alexander Fleming, trained minds can grasp the outstretched hand of opportunity. Sergo, with whom we are most familiar, saw the future and moved with energy and vision to meet needs. So thank you for all you do. Now, all of us are familiar with the four Ds, you know, dream, design, discover, develop. Uh, I have another letter from the alphabet which is often used here in events such as this, which is the word I. Not just eyes, but um, imagine, same as dream, innovate, initiate and integrate. 
Why integrate? It may not be a complete integration, but an integration of ideas, an effort to bring ideas and skills together. What one of the speakers, panelists from the last panel said, shared success, work together for shared success. And what I find truly inspiring about these four applications and innovations is that I think to a large degree they are working under the radar, under the surface, without fuss or publicity, because it is important to work independently of the public gaze, so that you can fix and tweak teething problems without pressure during the rollout. And I understand that you will be getting support to enable this process to move forward in your own initiatives during the, the pilots. Uh, I'll give an example from something that you may have heard about, which has been mentioned from time to time. Uh, are the boat clinics on the Brahmaputra. We now work in 15 districts with, uh, uh, 14 districts with 15 boat clinics. But these are boats, these are wooden boats which is indigenous technology married to a semi-modern technology. But these are strongly rooted in the past. When I first passed, when I first designed the first boat clinic, I sat with a local boat builder for days working on the design because he threw out most of my very fancy ideas. He said that here you have to pay attention to the current and not just to the current but to the velocity of the current in which I had never thought of. So he says, uh, I was in touch with the MIT design cell in Cambridge and they said, okay, you need an engine to move up because when you, on the brown put on the upper reaches, you're actually going up a mountain. Okay, we look back, you're actually climbing on the boat. So you need uh, an engine that would power you to go against the current. Coming down is easy. So um, that enables us to narrow down on uh, a simple engine, a Tata truck engine, uh, I think, uh, or Ashok truck engine, uh, 120 uh, horsepower. Now there are many challenges as uh, many of you have found, perhaps all of you have found in working uh, to expand the work that you do, uh, working with the principal stakeholder. Because although there are many challenges in working with government and we have experience of it, you can't do without the principal stakeholder. Um, one of the things I, I just wanted to mention is that uh, uh, it's very important to have scale in whatever you do. Because without scale, your idea can remain a good idea and die a natural death. With scale, it gets sustainability. Um, in the past years, I want two interventions because the board clinics are a good idea, but they're a platform. There are a platform for apps. One app, as it were, is solar. It takes solar energy to different villages. Another app is bringing nutrition into the diet of people who live on islands without much nutritious food. And that is the Moringa plant. Large plantations of, Moringa, of the Moringa plant now exist on islands. Because the islands is where we work. We don't work on the mainland. Because the critical challenge to uh, a place like Assam is that uh, I think some of you are from Assam, but many of you uh, may not have come to Guwahati before. Who has come to Guwahati for the first time? Uh, very few. Okay. So all of you are very familiar with the Brahmaputra. So go to the Brahmaputra and imagine it in flood. Here it's a small river, but upper, upper Assam and lower Assam, this is actually the narrowest of this. Uh, upper and lower Assam, during the monsoon, it becomes 12 kilometers wide. You can't see the other side. So to uh, work with, not overcome, 
uh, to work with an entity like that, you need sensitivity and knowledge, knowledge of local conditions. That's why innovations don't necessarily depend on specializations and specialists. They depend on ideas, passion, and partnering with local knowledge holders as equals. Um, so as I said, you know, you need to scale for, for sustainability and public impact. And the other thing that we've noticed um, when we started the board clinics, uh, the government was very keen uh, that I introduced family planning. I said we are just winning the confidence and trust of people. This is a very, very intimate part of their lives. I don't get into it. And ultimately, after a few years, people started coming in the home, uh, especially women and women from the minority community, asking for interventions uh, that would enable them to control the size of the family. So women got agency, not because we told them to, but because they saw that this was an intervention that they could trust. So trust, the five-letter word, is perhaps the most important when you work with communities. Finally, the issue of uh, media. Many of us sometimes wonder, why doesn't the media write about good things, you know? Media has its own agency, has its own agenda, its own interests, especially at these times. Media is not really free media anymore. But media is also very smart. They're not interested in PR. They're not interested in a puff job. If you pay them, of course, they may write something. But if you want something, a good relationship, a long-term relationship with media, cultivate people who can write about issues, not about you. Because that's most critical. And for all of us, I would emphasize good documentation. Do your research well, do your documentation of that research well, and of the work that you do. Uh, I close with uh, Two brief stories to have, just uh, three minutes. Uh, I'll start with the story which launched the Boat Clinic. About uh, 25 years ago, Jahani Boro and I, the filmmaker, we were on a ferry to Majuli, the great island in the heart of the river. And it was an evening ferry, and we heard this tragic story of a young woman who died in childbirth on that ferry while coming from the other side. The next morning, I mean, all of us were deeply troubled by it. We all tried to find out a bit more. And finally, the story came out. It was a young woman in her teens who had a very difficult pregnancy. She was carried from a village in a stretcher to the Ghat Ferry Ghat, uh, which is, was basically a sandbar, sandbank. And uh, they missed the ferry because there were only two, one in the morning, one in the evening. Evening foreign ferry the mist, and for those of you who've never stayed by the Brahmaputra in the, at night, on a winter night, I would recommend that you do because the river is constantly flowing and it is very dense, misty, and cold. So the next morning, this young woman and her family were able to make the take the ferry, but she didn't make it to the other side. And then I researched a bit. All of you are researchers, you have good research teams. And I found to my absolute horror that more women died in childbirth in Assam than in any other part of India. The MMR rate was 492 out of 1 lakh live births. The IMR was also high. And uh, then I did a bit more research about why this was and uh, came up with the one answer, which is that uh, there are 3,000, nearly 3,000 islands on the Brahmaputra. It's a unique phenomenon not seen anywhere in the world. Brought down by the silt and rocks and stones that it brings and grinds and dumps as it goes towards the Bay of Bengal. And um, those islands are home to nearly 10% of a science population. Not many people know. So I said, if any initiative is to take place, it can't take by bridges, you know, helicopter pads, and no roads. So we will 
design it through boats. And that's how the boat clinic idea came about. It's not rocket science, far from it. It's on a river, so it's going to be rocket science. But uh, the important thing was the service went to people, not people going for the service. I've seen a lot of things here of people going for the service. Here the service goes to them, because that was the principal problem, geographical and social uh, isolation. The other story I want to uh, close with is, um, and this always moves me when I tell it, uh, in Upper Assam, uh, a boat was coming back in the evening because in Upper Assam sometimes they go for five days. Most other boats they go for a day or two or a day, a day long. Five days because the distances are so large. And they were coming back and well, in the evening, the evening was setting in, and the, uh, they could see a young couple, a couple, waving to them rather desperately on a spit of land, literally a spit of land, a little island. So they said, okay, this looks a bit desperate, so let's go there. And they went there and they found that uh, there was this couple holding a young girl whose face was turning blue because she was very low on oxygen. She was dying. So they had the medicines, they gave her an injection, they watched over her for some time and she revived. So the doctor was very really interested. She said, How it seemed you were waiting for us. How did you know we were coming? Half an hour more and she would have gone. And they said, The spit is on a bifurcation of the river. He said, if you go on this route, you come back in three days. You go on this route, you come back in two days. You went on this route, so I knew on the third day you'd be back. And that is what makes something truly a people's movement. It is trust in a stranger who can save your life. Um, so seize the moment, work for your dreams, work for now and for the future. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sanjayji. Uh, I'd request our colleague Tejasvi to please present a token of our appreciation to sir. I think those stories are really humbling and kind of take us back to the roots of why we're doing some of the work that we do. So thank you so much for your words. And if we want to take more of these initiatives forward, if we want to be able to innovate and scale the solutions that are um, that, that are being built and being developed, I think one of the things that comes up is how we're going to access the different kinds of financial resources for this. So this is a segue into our panel on leveraging financial resources.